Hello! Today I'll show you what it's like to game on this fine desktop computer. But first, I have to use the restroom, leaving the system unattended and vulnerable to who knows what. Oh no! Someone stole my graphics card! Leaving only the integrated graphics on my Ryzen 5 3400G APU. Will I ever be able to game again? I guess we'll never know. Until now. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold the phone, time out. Guys, guys, I, I know it's hard to believe, but what you just saw was completely staged. I know, I, the performance was very believable, but rest assured the graphics card is fine, there's been no burglary. That was simply just a demonstration to get us into today's topic, which is, can you game on the brand new Ryzen 5 3400G APU using integrated Vega graphics? We're gonna find that out today because I personally have no idea how this thing performs and whether or not we actually still need a discrete video card here in 2019 anyway. With that said, I'm gonna start setting this system up for testing and I'm sure we'll have zero technical issues along the way. Okay, bit of a hold up here. The system is currently taking a crap on us. It's not launching any game. Well, it'll launch the game and then immediately crash or blue screen or freeze up. We already have, we have the latest BIOS updated. We have all the chipset drivers installed. Everything is set up as it should be, but we're still running into these issues. So I think the best thing to do is to swap the CPU into a different board, try booting it and see what happens. And hopefully we'll have better luck this time. Okay, we got the system working by essentially rebuilding it from scratch. I am now using a completely different motherboard. It's the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. We're using the same drive. I did, however, realize at the last minute that that drive still had some GeForce drivers left on it. So I ran DDU, completely wiped it, reinstalled the AMD chipset drivers, and voila, it seems to work perfectly fine. I'm not exactly sure if that's what fixed it because we, were, we also changed the motherboard, but everything seems to work great now, so I'm not gonna complain. We also have the Trident Z Royal RGB DDR4 3600 speed kit from G-Skill. However, we weren't able to post at 3600. I actually had to dial it back to 3400 and, and loosen the timings actually in order to even post. So there's something to be said there about memory support, memory compatibility with Ryzen 3000 and X570 still needing to improve just a bit. I mean, it's still a really fresh platform. It is a bummer that we have that extra 200 megahertz lying on the table considering how much Ryzen 3000 benefits from high memory frequency. Hopefully the BIOSes, the BIOSes continue getting updated regularly with better memory support all around. Now I did test five games today and I'm gonna be showing them to you in order of least demanding to most demanding. They did spend quite a bit of time in each of these games in order to find the most optimal settings in terms of quality settings and resolution that would still deliver at least 60 frames per second on average and potentially more than that depending on the title if it was a competitive title like an esports title which one of those we tested or a really fast-paced game i felt that uh, a frame rate higher than 60 fps was necessary for an ideal gaming experience in those titles and so i scaled the uh, the settings appropriately so keep that in mind i've already configured the settings in each of these games in order to give us the best balance between performance and quality for what this apu can handle the first one we have here is an indie game it's lovers in a dangerous space time and you can see that we have uh, all of our, our, our little HUD here from MSI Afterburner. So you guys can follow along and see exactly how the system is behaving and performing. I'm gonna jump in here. We can kind of just see really quick what frame rates we're getting. All right, now bear in mind, I am not gonna actually play this game or try to win. This game's actually much better with a, a gamepad um, anyway, but I'm just gonna try to roll through the level here if I can even <laughs> manage to move. There we go. So we're getting about 150, 160 FPS, give or take, which is fantastic. 
This is obviously not a game that requires high frame rates. It's not a competitive game by any means. You don't need super fast reflexes like you do with a game like CSGO, for example. But we're, we're having a really smooth uh, time here and the game looks great. It's gonna look exactly the same if you were playing with a, an RTX 2080 Ti. It's just, uh, it's just a super easy title, but just wanted to quickly demonstrate that maybe this is a good use case for the 3400G. If you were uh, an indie head, I don't know if that's a, even a term people use, but if you were super into indie games, you're an indie enthusiast and that's all you really wanted to do on like a super tiny like compact PC uh, this might not be a bad option because you can see that we're clearly having no problems running this game let's move on to the next game all right so for our esports title I picked CSGO and this is another fairly easy game to run not quite as easy as the last one um, because it's, it's 3d and stuff but you can see here that we're getting comfortable 120 130 FPS thereabouts and we're running at 1920 by 1080 at medium settings medium settings for a global shadow shadow quality texture detail effect and shape or detail. Uh, you can run these at high pretty comfortably. The FPS does drop, however, to 90 FPS, and I just feel like in a game like CSGO, there's such a huge emphasis on high frame rates uh, just to get that competitive edge because it is, again, an esports game. So I think most gamers playing this particular title are going to favor the higher frame rate because honestly, it, the game looks very similar between medium and high. You don't really notice a difference. Definitely not as much of a difference going from 120 FPS to 90 FPS. I mean, I'm as casual as they come when it comes to gamers, uh, and I can even even tell a bit of a slowdown going from 120 to 90. So in this case, the game looks good and performs well, which is rare for an APU setup. Usually you sacrifice one or the other, unless it's of course a very light game. So I guess you could make another case here, again, if you're a niche gamer for esports. If you're really into esports, those are pretty much the majority of titles that you're playing. You don't care about the, the hard to run AAA stuff, then this option might be good for you. But let's take a look at some other games. Taking a look at Doom, this marks our entrance into 720p territory because we are no longer able to run uh, the rest of the titles here, the, the remaining three titles at 1920 by 1080 comfortably. The frame rate's just too low. We're getting into the 30s and 40s. It's not ideal. So you can see here we're at 1280 by 720. You can see we're also using Vulkan because this API just benefits AMD hardware a lot more than OpenGL. That's also why we lost the Afterburner HUD because it doesn't support this API. Uh, I do have the Steam frame counter up here in green, which is super tiny. I'll probably blow that up in post so you can see it better. Uh, we are at medium settings. And again, these are the settings that I found to deliver the most ideal performance uh, in, in their particular titles. So you can see here, we're getting around 80 or 90 FPS. We could have gotten away with 60 FPS maybe increase the eye candy a little bit, got, got up to, uh, to high settings. But honestly, this is such a fast paced game. I think it plays much better at the current frame rate, uh, you know, while sacrificing just a little bit of uh, a little bit of aesthetics. And you can see here, when we look at certain objects like this thing in the middle, our frame rate kind of drops. There are definitely some, uh, some taxing objects in this game that will take tank your frame rate, not to mention when you have a horde of demons shooting all kinds of uh, particle effects at you and stuff, uh, it, does, it does tank the frame rate quite a bit. So we wanna give ourselves ample headroom uh, when we're just walking through corridors and looking at blank walls and stuff. So the performance isn't absolutely crushed during those super taxing moments. Now in the last title, I didn't really talk too much about how CSGO looked, but honestly, it looked fantastic. Even at medium settings, I could have been tricked into thinking I was gaming on a discrete GPU. In this particular title, I can definitely tell that we're, we're using entry level or low-end hardware. It doesn't look nearly as crisp. You can just tell from all the effects that we've turned off or had to set to low that, you know, shadows aren't popping, you know, textures are, are relatively low. That being said, I am gaming on a 32-inch 4K monitor, which is not realistic for someone using uh, these low-end specs. Um, you're probably gonna be gaming on a 1920 by 1080 panel, maybe a 24-inch display. Uh, so it's gonna look a lot better than it does right now. I know it's hard for you guys to tell on camera through a YouTube video what it actually looks like. And obviously I can't screen capture for you guys or the system will have a heart attack, but someone using a more appropriate monitor for these specs is gonna see a better image quality hands down because the pixels won't be stretched. You'll have higher pixel density if you're using a smaller monitor and so on and so forth. So uh, let's move on to the next title though. GTA 5 is a fantastic title because it's so darn scalable. It can bring a super high-end GPU down to its knees, but it can also be run on a wide variety of hardware. So uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see how, how decently performed I would equate it to what we were seeing in Doom more or less. Again, 
1280 by 720, there's no way we can really run 1080p comfortably here. You can see I have FXAA on because the game just looked super jaggy without it. And honestly, FXAA is kind of like the poor man's MSAA. Uh, it doesn't look quite as good, but it's also not nearly as taxing, which is why we're using it. Our settings are a blend of high and normal. Texture, shader, and shadow quality are all high. Everything else is pretty much bare minimum, with the exception of ambient occlusion and anisotropic filtering. Both of those are maxed out because they literally have no performance hit. So let's go ahead and jump in. You can see the, uh, the HUD is back. Afterburner HUD is back and it is larger than ever because of our low resolution. Well, I guess I could change that. So you can see here, as Franklin gets in his car, we're getting around 70, 80 FPS through these streets. GTA 5 is such an expansive world. It's a, it's a huge environment. There's a lot of different scenes and, uh, and objects. So the, the frame rate range really varies wildly depending on where you are. We're gonna get into the city here to see what that's like though. The cities are typically pretty congested. So uh, you can see frame rate has dropped a little bit, but there is definitely certain areas where uh, it picks back up. Um, to the, uh, the 80 FPS range. Very playable, GTA 5 is not a super fast game. You don't need incredibly high frame rates. You could be you know, running 60 FPS V-Sync locked uh, and still have a great experience. In my opinion, um, you don't need uh, 144 Hertz for this, this title by any means. Uh, that being said, the game definitely looks on the low end. It looks kind of like a console. I mean, I obviously can't uh, say for sure because I would need a, a direct side-by-side, -side, but it looks like we're pretty much in console territory in terms of how the game looks. Again, I'm gaming on a 32-inch 4K monitor with all the pixels stretched. Uh, I did try it uh, in windowed mode, or I'm sorry, yeah, in windowed mode at, at uh, seven, with 720p, and it definitely looks a lot crisper. So if you were gaming on a smaller monitor, again, um, the experience would look a lot nicer than, than what I'm seeing now. Now, you know, earlier I mentioned Ryzen 3000 does really well with high memory frequency. This is something that most of us know by now, but I accidentally did some testing earlier with a low speed kit. I was actually using the same kit, but I forgot to enable XMP 2.0 when I first started testing. So the memory was running at 2133, and this title at these settings, at this resolution, was getting roughly 60 FPS and, and sometimes dipping below that. And now here we are comfortably at 70 FPS and up. Of course, it will dip below that at times, but for the most part, we're seeing a 10 FPS gain. And when you're going from 60 to 70, that's those aren't huge numbers, that's a massive percentage. So let this be a reminder to make the right choice when choosing memory for your third gen Ryzen system. Our final game and the worst performing title is Resident Evil 2, the remake. Uh, you can see we're at 720p and literally every setting that can be the opposite of maxed out, completely unmaxed, has been unmaxed or, or turned off entirely. And still, we're getting awful performance. Okay, so I shouldn't say awful. It is somewhat playable, but it's not, it's not ideal. It's not comfortable. We're getting 40, 50 FPS. Depending on where you are, if you're like in a dark hall or something like that, you might be getting 60, 65, but the game just looks terrible. I mean, it, this doesn't even look like the remake. This looks like the original. I mean, no one's gonna wanna play a game that looks like this. So I guess it brings us back to reality a little bit and, and tells us that there are definitely titles that this APU will just flat out not be able to run. This isn't even the most demanding title that I have in my Steam library. Oh, what was that? Is that the Mr. X? Oh God, that's the worst, right? You can hear him, but you can't see him, can ya? Oh shoot, there he is. Okay, Mr. X, still scary at 720p. Let's see how terrifyingly bad this explosion looks. Oh yeah, that was really bad. Wow. And our frame rate tanked quite a bit. And it probably almost gave our APU an aneurysm. So summing things up here, can you actually game without a GPU here in 2019 using the latest and greatest APU that's currently on the market, which is the Ryzen 5 3400G? The TLDR answer to that is no, or at least not if mainstream gaming is your objective. We saw that you had to compromise and sacrifice a lot if you were scaling up beyond uh, an esports title or an indie game. You either had to sacrifice quality or performance or a mixture of both in, in a lot of cases. These AMD APUs easily outperform Intel's current iGPU offerings, but there's still no match for a CPU and discrete GPU combo, which kind of highlights the fact that for 150 bucks, which is what this, this APU currently retails for, there are alternatives out there that will greatly outperform perform the solution that we tested today. For example, you can get a Ryzen 3 1200 for roughly 65 bucks, probably cheaper if you find it on sale. Pair that with say an RX 560. It's not the craziest, most flashy, sexy GPU in the world, but it's going to vastly outperform what the 3400G is capable of. Now that's just an example. I'm sort of rough estimating that that, that pairing would be about $150. It might be a little higher than that, but if you're
you're super strapped for cash, you might be a bit more open to buying used hardware. And if that's the case, you'll have a much higher chance of landing a better gaming solution than the 3400G for the same price. So at the end of the day, I think this APU is really reserved for a special type of user, maybe someone who's looking to build an HTPC, because this thing can handle 4K video playback and streaming no problem. It's, it's totally equipped to handle that. Or if you're a niche type of gamer that's maybe looking to build an emulator PC or an indie game platform or even an eSports uh, system that's really tiny and compact that you know has a chassis that doesn't need to support a discrete GPU so you can make it even smaller, throw it into your bag, take it on the go anytime, anywhere. Those are all fitting scenarios for this APU. But if God forbid someone breaks into your house and steals your discrete graphics card out of your 3400G gaming PC, you better hope you have a spare. That is gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. It is late, so I'm gonna get out of here. Actually, it's not too late, 10.30, uh, but I do have to edit this video now, damn it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I will see you guys in the next video.